City Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. From Ed Walsh Field on the campus of Manhasset High School, the Varsity Media Sports Network presents the Battle of the Sound as the Blue Wave of Darien come across from Connecticut to take on the Indians of Manhasset High School. A good afternoon here from Manhasset High School. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford with you in this game, which is presented by Sting It Up out of Huntington, New York. String it up. Com. Well, Mike, it is a game that both sides circle every year on their calendar. I wondered if it was a rivalry, and both coaches said, oh, yeah, this is a rivalry because there's competitive games every year. Darien and Manhasset, really only the COVID year stopped this rivalry going on since, uh, what, 1997, and it's been so many one-goal games, a tight series. Uh, it has been fantastic lacrosse. Sure, two nationally ranked programs, uh, both public school programs, I might add. Proud to say that, they're public school programs. And, and uh, two very best teams in the country, always in the rankings, and but full of chock full of uh, Division One quality, quality talent here today. So that alone makes it a pretty good game to see. And then the rivalry between the teams of scores have been amazingly close over the years. In fact, let's take a look at a little bit of the series history here in the Battle of the Sound. And there you see it, uh, the goals, right, so close between these two teams, 192 to 186. The first meeting back in 1997 was one of seven one-goal games. That was won by Darien. The last meeting also won by the Blue Wave. That was up uh, in Connecticut, 13-11. You talk about two of the Blue Bloods of the Northeast. Look at the state titles, 14 for Darien, five for Manhasset. The Indians, of course, winning last year in the Class C title game. Darien losing to Staples in the Class L title. Look at the All-Americans, 99 All-Americans out of Darien, 65 for Manhasset. So, yeah, when you talk about the best of the best in the Northeast, these are two of the teams that are always right at the very uh, top of that kind of an order. Sure, Darien, you know, one of the class programs in the state of Connecticut. Uh, it's, it's a program that everybody wants to beat every single year. And then you have, you have you know, Manhasset been playing lacrosse here since the, the mid-30s. And, uh, you know, we would probably have more state titles if they wouldn't have to go up against Garden City yeah. for a lot long, a long of stretch of it, and Cold Spring Harbor for another stretch of it. So they've battled against those guys in different classifications over the years, and um, it's a really great program. What a great start these guys, the blue wave of Darien, are off to. It has been an absolute killer start of the season. Think about this. They play Fairfield Prep on the road to open the season. That's a rematch of last year's Class L semifinal game. Darien wins that. Then they take on the number one ranked team in the country by USA Lacrosse Magazine, the Brunswick School, and they win that game as well. So this is the third game of a really difficult stretch for Jeff Braymeyer's guys. A lot of different faces and a lot of new faces, uh, but a couple guys who are returning, uh, and we'll look at those guys, some of our players to watch here. And, of course, it starts on, up front with Brady Picorni, the third Picorni brother to play, arguably the best. He's a junior. He's a great Dodger, a lefty. He's going to Notre Dame, and in the back, you've got Mac McGarren going to Bucknell. Uh, there's a few different long poles. They've got a really stout defense and a great goalie who we'll speak about going forward, but I know that you love Brady Picorni's game. Yeah, I've seen Picorni play in uh, club circles quite a bit over the years, a tremendous lefty goal scorer. What I'm really starting to like this year is you can see the expansion of his game. He's, you know, he's feeding the ball. He looked great the other night, distributing the ball, not trying to do 
really too much. You know, I love the fact that he has the ability probably to try to get to the goal whenever he, whenever he thinks he can. But he played within the team concept so well the other day. I was very impressed. By the way, in that 12-11 win over number one Brunswick, it was Brady uh, Picorni with three and four, including the winner with 1.7 seconds left to give Darian that huge 12-11 win. Well, Manhasset, they've started the season 3-0. They beat Southside 5-1. They beat John Jay on the road 11-5. And then that was followed by a 16-1 win over Carrie like Darian. There's new faces. There's new players. Uh, but listen, Keith Primwell's guys are right there in that conversation for another state championship this year. Sure, absolutely. They'll be you know, one of the class programs in, in the state in Class C. And there's certainly new favors, faces, but in Manhasset, you know, one of those places where there's new, there's new players, but it's kind of more of a reloading than ever a rebuilding. It's never truly a, what you would call a rebuilding year. They just have guys that they can roll out from the low levels who have a lot of experience playing at the low levels, playing at backup time on the varsity, and also, uh, you know, great club experience. So it, it definitely isn't like, you know, oh my God, what are we going to do? Where these guys go? Joey Terenzi left. What are we going to do? There's going to be somebody else ready to go. Yeah, Terenzi at Virginia. We'll take a look at some of the players to watch now for Manhasset. And it's Jake Peterson uh, up front. You see his numbers four and two on the year. The Harvard commit wearing that special number 32. Look out for him and James Lapina. Usually, we usually uh, focus on the guys with long poles, right? But he does such an incredible job as a short stick D midi. We had to give him his props going to BU. Sure, certainly one of the best players in his position on all Long Island. And uh, you know, Peterson is Peterson is uh, is uh, between the lines, go to the goal. He can do everything. I raved about him last year. I was on his bandwagon. I did when you know I was on I was on his bandwagon a lot last year. I think he's a great, great, great player. And uh, excited to see him run around today. We'll take a quick break for the anthem. We'll get you our starters when we return. It's the Battle of the Sound, Darianne, Manhasset, and it's all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh! The Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to Ed Walsh Field on the campus of Manhasset High School where it's the Battle of the Sound, Darianne and Manhasset, Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford, the entire varsity media crew. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for both teams first for visiting Darianne. And we mentioned up front, Picorni leading 
the charge on attack. You've got Porter Barnett and Dylan DeRizzo as well. DeRizzo, that lefty who started on JV a year ago. Your first midfield line, and technically it's kind of an even midfield. It's an interesting strategy that Jeff Braymeyer has. It's McGuckin, Lancaster, and Billado. Billado, the freshman on this offensive first midfield line. And your close D is Jake Wilson, Mac McGarren, and Mark McNamara. And again, the head coach, one of the legends of this sport, Jeff Braymeyer in his 40th season, a 1972 graduate of Darien High School. An overall record of 652 wins and 143 losses. He is sixth all-time in wins. And he's only a few behind Rob Bordley of Landon for that spot. Your goalie today, one of the best in the Northeast, is Carter Hagen. He has been lights out to start the season. 22 saves against Fairfield Prep. Had a fantastic game against Brunswick School as well. Daring in one of those schools that they just uh, develop and nurture those goaltending positions and uh, he is the latest of that group. Let's take a look at the Manhasset Indians starters quickly. It's Connor, Haggerty, and Colin. Your midfield line of Peterson, Cargiulo, Mondiello. Your close D of Lamarca, Mulholland, and Morrison. In the cage for Manhasset in his second year as a starter. First year as a full-time starter is Matt M. And now you see the face-off X. On your left is Cal Gerard, one of the best in the country at this position. He has been for a few years now. And the faceoff position has been a struggle for Darianne. And that was Leo Barbagallo. And the first win goes to Gerard. Easy exit by Gerard right there going forward, popping out to himself. You know, take a look at that matchup all game long and see how Darian presides to, you know, to, to approach it. When they played Brunswick the other day, uh, Dylan, they, they, they really, you know, they, it became a non, they lost all, almost every faceoff. It was kind of a non-factor in some ways as the game wore on. So. Yeah, I mean, Andrew Greenspan for Brunswick was 26 of 28 from the faceoff X. Uh, the only two wins that he got were procedural uh, violations, and yet uh, it was Darien winning that game. And they only went about 32% in the first game against Fairfield. They won that game too. So much for whoever wins the faceoff leads the way. And how about that for an opening goal? Matt Cargiulo, the UMass commit. Great, great set play. It's like an opener. You practice during the week. You're going to run this when we come out, guys, as we're going to run the first time. And a, and a great opener for Manhattan. What a start. You see Cargiulo throws it forward. They get a, a, a down pick out of the backside. And that was Cargiulo, who was the initial dodger, coming off that, off that screen off the ball a nice set play for Cargiulo the UMass commit the senior his sixth goal of the year and great to see Aiden Haggerty back missed all of his junior year Gerard a clean win tries to initiate that early offense and now they'll settle in a little bit Will Manhasset but Haggerty a Villanova commit missed the entirety of his junior season picks up his fifth assist of the year Interesting to see, you know, how Manhasset continues to attack. I really like the Darien defensive personnel when they played the other day against Brunswick. And Jake Wilson, you see 88. He's one of the leaders of that defensive group. A senior, one of the captains, a Loyola commit. Like a lot of these guys, too, there's a great synergy with the football team and the hockey team and that toughness that you get from, from pretty much every season. Getting topside, turning was Connor. Good defense, so he's got to pull it back out. Yeah, that backside down, down pick. Coming off the initial dodge, and, and, and it looks like he got his hands free a little bit, but felt better about shooting it from the distance he was at. And Hag Haggerty works it to X. There's Danny Colon, the sophomore. I'm interested to see today how the new offensive guys are playing with Colin, Mondiello, Petrucelli, Haggerty, and how they fit themselves in with the veterans they have coming back who are of significant talent. Here comes one of them. Cargillo has the first goal. Great feed in front, and Mondiello with the finish. And Manhasset leads it 2 nothing. Really good look there by Cargillo. Looking inside for Mondiello. 
You see here on the invert, squares his man up and gets his hands free. Well, the Darien defender kind of reached at him a little bit and flicked his stick at him, and that got uh, Kokojuo's hands free. He can either come lefty, or down with a right-handed player. Right now. I'm gonna win on the hold. I think one of the things, Dylan, that makes that makes you know, you know, uh, you know, Cal Gerard so good is his ability to handle the ball. You see the best guys in the country, Luke Weirman from that Maryland, uh, Jake Naso at Duke. You know the comparison I made a little bit in, in, in our conversation with with Keith Cromwell was a Petey LaSala who stays on, right? And like he's not a detriment to their attack when he gets into it. Well, Petey LaSala when he when he played in high school had to do everything for his high school yeah. team. He played, he faced off. Top side, another goal. What a start for Manhasset as Cardulo gets his second. Cardulo gets underneath the dot, it's under his defender. It just goes to the middle of the field. It looks like Darren was not really communicating, sliding correctly there. He kind of gets under him. It looks like they came adjacent late because Manhasset was in the circle. Really good offense by Manhasset. And Darian calls timeout. What a start for Matt Cardulo and Manhasset. Two goals and an assist. Cardulo Cromwell says is a big, athletic, bruising type of midfielder. Hey, not unlike a lot of the guys you see on Darian, right? Those football running backs and those uh, hockey defensemen as well for the Blue Wave. So uh, he's similar to that. But he's a guy who's put his time in, right? Mixing up between the first midfield and second midfield a year ago. Now it is his time to shine. And what a great start to this latest edition of the Battle of the Sound for Matt Cardulo. Two goals and an assist in the first few minutes. Well, last year was kind of like a four-man midfield, right? You had Joey Terenzi uh, and you had... Uh... And you had uh, Hunter Panzik, who's now with Air Force Academy, George Renz at, 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 uh, at Virginia. And you had the two returners in Peterson and, and, uh, and Cardulo. It's kind of a four-man group that kind of rotated through there, right? Always having one guy kind of fresh. And it seemed like to me when we used to see Manhattan last year, that was their formula at the midfield. And they continue it this year as well, where it's uh, Peterson, Cardulo, Mondiello, and Petroselli as well. So it's a four-man rotation in that first midfield. And uh, conversely, interesting for Darianne when we spoke with Jeff Bremeyer earlier this week, said that he has an even first and second midfield line. He, and he thinks, and you see the uh, on our face-off focus, Gerard 83% on the year. He's now four of four in this game. Those are outstanding numbers, man. And he's gonna, he's, listen, as he tries to bat one there towards the goal, and Hagen picks it up. But he's gone against Melconian from Southside this year, and he will continue to go against some, some really good ones. But in this area, and really, I don't know if there's many in the country that are better um, at his craft than Cal Girard is. Yeah, he's excellent. I, I, don't, I don't think he was trying to do too much. It was just the way they were playing him, and he saw the opportunity to get to the goal and he kind of, you know, mishandled it a little bit. But you got to be careful with Cal giving those opportunities because he'll go right to the goal. First time we're seeing Darien now on attack. And coming downhill is the freshman, Billado. They got some great young guys, Darien, I'll tell you right now. I wouldn't want to play him two years from now. It's funny you said that. because that, that's next year. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what Braymar said. Like, if you think it, it, if there's a time, as there's a skip pass, but it goes out of bounds. He said if there's a time to get that ran, maybe it's this year because this freshman class they have in, Ryan Thurlow, part of the attack, and Bilodeau on the midfield line. Max McBride, he's on that second or 1A midfield line. Some really good uh, freshmen up here on this Darian varsity team. Yeah, you can see Lapina right there with the, with the clear. With the part return that ball out off the, off the turnover to Bacorny. 3 0 early on for Manhasset in the latest edition of the Battle of the Sound right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. I think if you're Darian, you got a couple things going on. Maybe you got the high coming off of beating, uh, beating Brunswick the other night, and you have the bus right here to Manhasset, and all of a sudden, you know. And has the guys, their uh, their mouthpieces in, in, and they're ready to go. You know, and, uh, yeah. I mean, first true road trip for Darian, right? Like you're out of the state of Connecticut. You played away at Fairfield Prep, but certainly it's a little bit more difficult when you get to start crossing bridges and 
uh, working through the traffic of the Bronx to get out to Long Island. Here comes Cardulo, already two and one. Make it three! It's, it's pretty simple lacrosse right now for Haskin. They just go to the goal hard. Good shot by Cardulo. Great spacing by the Manhattan offense. One thing what they do offensively is there's tremendous spacing between the different players. Hard to help, hard to cheat off a man or hedge. You see they're bringing that. Swan was, was a little bit late to come there. They, they're taking the slide guy away. They popped a, a man out behind the Dodger, took the slide away. Really good offensive coaching by Keith Cromwell, who it, it's a tremendous offensive coach. Five for five, Gerard, and another goal, Liam Connor. And Manhattan, what a start for the Indians. They lead this one five nothing. The funny, you know, it, it, it's the funny thing right there is Cal gets that pop set full, was able to get get a goal off the face off. The other night against Brunswick, Brunswick could never get to this. You see, Cal gets a forward exit, gets under the pole, which creates the slide from Darian. And they're able to beat the slide. A really, really good shot there by Liam Connor. It's Connor's fifth of the year, the captain and Colgate commit. And Gerard, his first assist, has three goals on the season. Gerard, one of two returning All Americans on Long Island. Tyler McCarthy out of Connequat, the other. You see right there, he tried to go backwards there, right? He went a little, a little backwards and they had zippered the, uh, the his, his, his short stick went down, but was able to get back, back to the ball. So he has all the exits, Cal. He's got all the exits, all the escapes. Um, he's seen it all in his career. So this is where this is where having the great face-off guy in a 5 nothing lead can really make it tough on the other team. Haggerty up top. I was about to ask you that, right? As if you're on that Darian bench, right? I mean, obviously you need to stop, but... I think you just need to, to breathe a little bit, right? Get get the ball moving on the attack. Your your defenders and your goalie have been under siege early on. First shot by, by Jack Peterson right there. You can see maybe he hasn't even gotten involved yet in yeah. the five goals, right? You see Peterson's ability to like run without effort. It's like so easy. Now the good thing I think if you're Darian is you, you do like your poles and you love your goalie as well. So uh, it's been a difficult start for the Blue Wave. But if they can get a stop, maybe they can get uh, a little momentum going their way. Here's Mondiello. They've done a good job, Manhasset, against the, the short six from Darry and just creating offense. And, and, and uh, they found something there maybe when watching film or scouting. Haggerty off the pick. And there's a shot wide by Connor. Well, you see they're working that short six matchup on the invert again, right? He's trying to get, get his hands free to feed that ball. And here is Peterson up top now. You see the spacing right there in a the circle here, just keeping it really wide, keeping the Darian defensive personnel away from each other and not able to help so easily. Here's Colin from X. And back up top to Peterson. He draws the pole and Wilson. Peterson gets down hole. Downhill, tries to go behind the back, and that shot was wide. Darian's gonna have to come up with a defensive solution when they're popping that Dodger up, that, 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 that man out behind the Dodger, they're taking away the immediate slide, and that's letting Peterson get under, and they're kind of putting him in a, in a... Oh, a nice save by Hagen. That's what Hagen was doing the other night, but I really loved, he was making some really great saves. He had really good uh, uh, ball, ball control of the ball. And right off the save, how about that shot by Barnett? But M makes the save. First shot in the M saw in the game, he makes that one. Good start. It was a good look for Darian, but you gotta wonder if the Blue Way wouldn't have just liked to have, again, had, the, had a little bit more of the ball there and, and ran some something settled. Out of the box comes Mondiello. One thing Darian has is they have a bunch of different defensive personnel that they can put in the game. Right now you see that 88's out of the game. Wilson, yeah. Yeah, Wilson's out, but 10 is in there now. And he, he's a big, strong kid too. He can do a lot of things. With 
Donald Mack now, another lefty. Kind of that fourth attackman, a guy who rotates in. His brother, Kevin, of course, played at Michigan and Stony Brook as well. Now Peterson, a bouncer and another save. Higgins dialed it in the last couple last couple times. Now the ride for Manhasset really giving Darianne problems. Great hustle there by, by, uh, by Colin. And here come the blue wave on attack, Luke Caesar. Brother Joe now at Georgetown, an All-American a year ago. It's really only their third possession, real possession offensively. The first one, I think, uh, you know, Pacorni threw one away, you know, off the dodge, trying to feed it, and, uh, and it was saved by him next time down, which is really kind of still an unsettled situation. This is a real second, second, six on six. Here comes Pacorni. Has had to become more of a distributor this year. Good ball protection. Low shot wide of the mark. That was Max McBride, another one of those electric freshman middies. As the Indians will talk it over, their first time out. And will take it with them as well. It is the battle of the sound, and it has been all Manhasset to this point. The Indians with a 5-0 lead over Darien. You're watching it all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to Ed Walsh Field here on the campus of Manhasset High School. It is the Indians with an early 5-0 lead over Darien. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford, the entire varsity media crew here in this matchup of two of the top 11 ranked teams in the country by USA Lacrosse Magazine. Manhasset ranked number nine in the country. Darien 11, Brunswick is slash was number one. Takeover by the Indians on defense, and here they come up the field. Good ground ball by Jack Lamarca right there, getting it up and out. And that's Jack Morrison on the clear. You've got three Jacks <laughs> to start on defense. Not as good as three aces, but three Jacks are pretty good, that is for sure, in Lamarca, Mulholland, and Morrison. Makes announcing easier, just yell out Jack, and you're probably right. <laughs> Same for Coach Cromwell as well as Jack. He, oh, he says it drives him crazy. That is Manhasset. They have been in full control as we're uh, entering the final minutes shortly of this dominant first quarter. There was an early surge, that is for sure. Cardula with three, Mondiello and Connor with one apiece. And that is the difference right now. Hagen has made a few big saves. Ims made the only save he's had to make. Well, right now is a minute to go. I think, I think what the answer Darian is doing is they're short-sticking Haggerty and they're double-polling right now, Cardulo and uh, Peterson. We'll see if that becomes a consistent plan on their part. And then that's what's gonna hold here a five, a five nothing. It's gonna, gonna be five nothing or six if you if you keep problem, right? It's gonna end right down here. I like these matchups against the Nassau's middies against the short six from Darien. Yeah, that's Morgan Rupenstein. He's had a great start offensively, and that's one of the things, again, that Braemeyer said at the start of the year. He doesn't really go with the middies. He just has two even midfield units inside the final 14 seconds of this first quarter. Here is Connor. Connor spins. Gets topside, low shot, and a nice save by Hagen. His third 
of the first quarter as the buzzer sounds. What a start for Manhasset here at home. It starts at the face-off X where Cal Girard has been perfect. He is six for six. How about a little pass and Liam Connor with the finish. It's the battle of the sound and it is Manhasset with a 5-0 lead over Darianne. You're watching it all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Are you tired of constantly having to adjust your lacrosse stick during the game? Let the experts at String It Up in Huntington take care of it for you. At String It Up, we use the highest quality materials and techniques to ensure your stick is game ready every time. Visit them today at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web www.stringitup.com. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to Ed Walsh Field. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford here with you. And 5-0 uh, Manhasset after one. And already we're seeing Jake Wilson here with the pole, Mike, to battle Cal Girard. Well, they're going with the pole, and they're taking away the rear exit. You can see they zippered down here on, the, on Manhasset. Uh, so he's going to go out that way. Wow, it just shows you how good he is. He just goes with the other behind exit. That's awesome. Seven in a row for Cal Girard, a guy who... We said 83% face-off wins on the year. I mean, people, if you're watching the game, it's really hard. Just knowing you got the pole, the pole's going to try to beat you up. You know you can't take your direct rear exit. It's hard to go forward against the pole. You take it the opposite way, go pick it up, and then manage the ball for your offense. That's, that's really hard to do. And there's Peterson, 32, that... Prototypical North South Dodger was the MVP of last year's Long Island Championship, which Manhasset earned revenge beating Mount Sinai. So they kept the double pole, the two poles up on Cardulo and on Peterson. If you're Manhasset, why are you in any rush, right? You don't want to stall, but you want, you know, just figure out what you want to do and, and be simple with it. You see, they're playing out of that circle and really putting the near man in a, in a, in a tough situation. Haggerty works off the screen, pops it up top, and here comes Peterson downhill. He's got Wilson on him. They do a great job of emptying out off the dodge and making it a circle, make it come adjacent. You see you have Connor in there right now. Tough feed in front, and it's taken away by Darien. Connor was open, though. His feed wasn't exactly on the stick, but, but he's open in there. That was Mac McGarren, the Bucknell commit. We saw him score a goal against Brunswick. Uh, really has that great ability to move up the field. And now the Blue Wave look to get going on attack. It's Elliot Lancaster, the junior. Likely will be the hockey captain in a year's time. Nifty stick work by Darren on the clear. You know how many teams would have been would have been all jammed up trying to clear it against the pole there and they throw a bounce pass. And uh, one thing about Darren is you, you, when you get running a gun against them, that's what they're very good at. Is they're, they're highly skilled. And here comes Picorni. Spinning topside, McCorney. McCorney shot was saved by him. McCorney kind of put it right at him, you know, and got down on it. It was a good save. McCorney, the number seven ranked player in the country in the class of 2024 by Inside Lacrosse. He's got five and five on the season, which again speaks to how much more. He's not just that lefty sniper anymore, more McCorney. He's had to become more of that distributor as well. Sure, that was a good take. I mean, you got to live with your best guy shooting the ball when he gets his hands free. He'll, he'll probably, you know, get back to that later again, no, no doubt. And, and, and you try to place it a little to the right or left of, um, of him. He certainly placed that winner well, right? I think we've, we've seen that go viral, uh, viral, excuse me, on social media and people wondering how did Picorni's shot get in from distance? A little bit of a knuckler, 
sometimes I think you're thinking he's shooting it so hard. Sometimes yeah. and you react, you overreact to it. And you it's under it's uh, you know you overspeed your hand, your hand movement, and the ball's un under. Yeah, like that pitcher you know, that with a little change up, right? I'm my words right now, if you know what I mean. I hear you. <laughs> Connor using that size to try to grab that ball down. Gets the GB to keep this possession alive. Diamond can produce that good ball pressure. And uh, the Manhasset players are handling it pretty well right now. And there you see Haggerty. This is one of the good matchups against the short stick. Haggerty, a natural attackman, playing against the shorty. Gets around Lancaster and... There's another save by Hagen. Hagen's got four or five right there. Now you got a transition right now. Here comes Wilson. Nice pass. Picorni spins. Shot and M again. M's got three. And Hagen's got four on the other side. And here comes Darian the other way. Now, excuse me. Here comes Manhasset the other way. Well, Pete is such a horse. He just legs that ball out, like you know, and, and takes checks. And you've got another one of those special jerseys, and Lapina's wearing it, number 44. Haggerty with another now, number four. Lapina just did a great job embracing his role on the team and what he brings, and, and probably logs the most minutes of almost any midfielder. Maybe not today because they're playing so much offense, but. Carjulo right into the teeth of that Darian defense. A swim move there by Carjulo, getting this, getting to the middle of the field. Higgins has made some good saves. You know, he's kind of holding a minute right now, Darian. It could be, you know, Mahas could have six or seven by now. Now already on the season, Higgins got 36 saves, the Loyola commit. We mentioned it before, Darian just has this incredible history of developing and churning out terrific college level goalies. And Hagen is the latest. Cargiulo sets the screen. Here comes Danny Colon. And that's the guy that's just doing a great job without trying to do too much. Like, do your job. You know, be the party starter. Move on to the next man. What a feed and finish! Connor in front with the dunk, and it is six nothing Manhasset. And right on cue for my comments about just knowing your job and doing your job, right? You can see the replay. They move it up top. That's Petroselli on the short stick, just getting to the middle of the field. This is the pass right here. Throwing it forward. Oh, what a look. And there's Peterson to Connor. So Petrocelli doesn't get a point. He gets no points on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on that goal. But meanwhile, he's really he gets the hockey assist, right? He's yeah. really the, the guy breaking down that short stick matchup. Look at that. Give Darian a face-off win, and it comes again from one of the poles as Grafton Eli back in after an injury gets that face-off win. Eli's a good-looking player. I think he's trying to pull that one out right there and just got it uh, kind of caught against the pole and the ball goes the other way. I don't think you'll see that mistake too often. Darian in desperate need here of a response, just a goal here to get them going. Good job by Lapina. Lapina's so tough, he's like the fifth pole. You know, he's so good on his matchup. Well, that's what Cromwell said, and when they played south side, Owen West is the guy, right, for Southside, and that was his mark as Lapina. Yard sale now, and here comes Manhasset the other way. With the ice pick. <laughs> right on cue, and yeah, listen, that's such a, listen, you know as a, as a head coach, what an incredible uh, thing for you as a defensive coach, right, to think about that. When you've got a guy like Lapina who can take Maybe the best team, the, the other team's best offensive player. Now you've got, you can play a little bit with your poles, right? Absolutely, you definitely can. And he, you know, he gets, he, you know, he gives up a little bit there, and it comes with the ice pick over his head. He gets that ball on the ground. So much fun to watch. And back on attack goes Manhattan. We don't have the time of possession numbers here, but it has obviously been heavily slanted towards the hosts of Dar of Manhattan.
Yeah, between the face-offs and, and, and uh, you know, Darren's ro ro relatively short possession. The problem is you're down 6 nothing, more than halfway through the second quarter, and you can't just, you have to play offense, right? You got to go and score goals. You got you got to make up six, six goals somewhere one at a time. So now you're going to have to play faster. And when you lose, you know what, all but one face-off right to this point, those, those runs that you can get in this sport, they're not going to happen as easily. You know, when, when you start winning those face-offs, you can move, you can go, and you get into a rhythm, getting top side, and it looks like Hagen got a piece again of that shot by Haggerty. Really good, so, you know, Manhattan really doing a really good job of dodging downhill, throwing it forward, two passes, and then setting that backside, that backside pick, that slam pick on the backside for the lefty attackman. Mondiello up top for Haggerty. Haggerty is a guy who was projected to be part of that midfield unit a year ago, and obviously he had that ACL injury. We're seeing him more on attack. That shot went right into the long stick, and here comes Dowering in the other way. That was a great job by Mark McNamara, just getting his stick. And here comes the Blue Waves. They, they caught Dowering in here on the substitution game. DeRizzo, our first flag of the game, comes as well, so they don't get a shot off but they'll get their first man up. It'll be a one minute on the slash. Well, the, the, the Darian fans, I think, were calling for a, a slash on the riding on the riding midfielder when he swung, and they didn't get that one. But it looks like they got Mulholland, excuse me, Morrison on the uh, on the slash on the head there. So you take away one of the jacks. Man up opportunity for Darian. First of this game with 3:15 left in the second quarter. You got Picorni up there in the middle in the 3-3, and he's you know he got the ability to distribute and and and, sh and, and shoot with equal ability. He very been very difficult. They have a lock on him right now. Lopina is locking him, so they're trying to play five versus four right now. We'll see where he goes. That's what we said before, right? When you have an elite D midi, you can play these kind of games. Sure, I mean, a lot of times you're going to lock a guy a man down, but... Up top, and that rip was wide of the mark by DeRizzo. You know, a man up, you're not really going to dodge, really, you know, so it's very halfway through the penalty, and you've taken the best player away. He's trying to screen off the ball here. You can see him trying to set, set some off-ball screens, just working inside. Bilodeau, we go the other way, and that shot also off the mark high and wide by Rubenstein with 18 seconds left on the man up. So it's a lock with a four-man rotation on the other five players. Bilodeau gets it right back, spins inside, knocked away. Ball stays with Darian as now we are seven seconds away. Broken stick. Maybe one last chance here for Darian on the man up. And we are even. Good job by the Indians right there. Just coming up with a, you know, an answer there to the corner. Good old lock, taking it away. Now he's staying on him as well. Love it. McCorney tries to get inside. Apina all over him, saved by him. Great job by Manhattan defense, just giving him, you know, giving him really good shots to look at right there. That's a runner going through the middle of the field, but really not downhill, kind of running sideways. He cleaned it up and he got the rebound. Lapina, Keith Cromwell says, just an unbelievable kid. He owns matchups, he says. He loves those type of matchups. You saw it there a second ago as there's a timeout on the play. You saw it there a moment ago on Picorni. You know, as, as a short stick D midi, you know, he just lives for those big names and, you know, knowing who, you know, the, the commitment and the, and the ranking of the opponent. Sure, you got to embrace that when it's your turn to be that guy. You, no, no one gets in a defensive set. No player gets dodged more than, than the short stick D midis. And now, now what Manhattan is saying is when you have him, well, you really can't dodge him either. So you try to just work on the other matchup, you know. In, in the college game, you can see a short stick D-mini might get dodged three, four, five times. 
within the same within the same possession. So it's a really really difficult really really difficult job. We take a look at the varsity media Long Island boys lacrosse, lacrosse rankings entering the third week of this season. You see up top St. Anthony's. They've got a shot to be number one in the nation this week. We'll see how that goes after Brunswick's loss. And uh, you see Manhasset right there, the first public school team. Northport as well undefeated. Shoreham and Mount Sinai. Garden City a big win today. A game that we had for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network, winning by a goal at Cold Spring Harbor. Sure, a great win also by Wanto today against uh, against Copswag. So a bunch of teams in the rankings have all, uh, have all played. So there'll be a lot of movement this week. A few teams definitely moving down and some teams moving up. Another win for Konequat as well this afternoon or this morning, I think it was. So you got a minute and 26 seconds here. I'm not really sure. You, you can hold for one. They probably may tell you that you may, may get the stall put on you and you have to keep it in the box at some point. I think Manassi can, can handle that. But it's 6 nothing. I think Keith Cromwell couldn't have, couldn't have uh, written a better situation, right, than where we are now. So it's, is it 6 nothing or 7 nothing is probably the way yeah. to go. Yeah, as long as it's not 6-1 and, and giving some life to Darianne going in to the halftime break. So it's the same thing they did before. They took the two guys with the short stick mask and they put them on one side of the field together. That's Haggerty and, uh, and um, Mondiello on one side of the field together. And they're keeping the poles of Darian kind of away from them, right? So they can pick for each other, kind of replace each other, roll back, get under replace, trying to keep those poles away. Now they're in the invert. Directing traffic there is Mondiello. Chased by Briggs McGuckin, the junior. Two pretty good athletic looking guys right there going at it, right? Yeah. Little bounce, it, little bounce on Mondiello getting away from him. See 24 seconds left now as Mondiello. Guy who makes good decisions. They know that he'll get short stick a lot and he's gonna have to make those winning plays off of those matchups, Keith Cromwell says. They play catch behind at X. Haggerty gets topside. Haggerty the bouncer. There's a save and then a quick clearance. And Manhasset is calling, I believe, for a goal. There was a flag thrown too. There was a flag, yeah. And he'll leave on the far side when the official says contest. He found a little flag there. We'll see what that's all about. He might have picked it up, not sure. Here we go again. Watch it again from Haggerty. Are they trying to say it went under the crossbar, I guess? I think they're also trying to say a 26 got him up pretty high. Mm -hmm. and they, they, they didn't call foul. Or did they at the, at the end of the half? So yes, they're saying it was. Watch again, 26. Good dodge off that backside, off that backside action. There's McNamara, right there. The stick, ooh, late hit on Haggerty. So 26 will go in when they start the second half. But a first half dominated by Manhasset. They got out going early on with Cargiulo leading the way. And how about this? A little shake, a little bake, and a terrific pass and dunk by Connor in front. He's got two, Cargiulo's got three, and it is Manhasset with the lead at the break. You're watching the battle of the sounds right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Lacrosse players, listen up. It's halftime, and you know what that means. It's time to tune up your stick. At String It Up in Huntington, we know a well-strung stick that can make all the difference on the field. That's why we offer fast and reliable stringing services that will have you back in the game in no time. Visit String It Up today at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web, www.stringitup.com. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. 
College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Lacrosse players, listen up. It's halftime, and you know what that means. It's time to tune up your stick. At String It Up in Huntington, we know a well-strung stick that can make all the difference on the field. That's why we offer fast and reliable stringing services that will have you back in the game in no time. Visit String It Up today at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web, www.stringitup.com. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network the home 
for New York High School Sports. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Lacrosse players, listen up. It's halftime, and you know what that means. It's time to tune up your stick. At String It Up in Huntington, we know a well-strung stick that can make all the difference on the field. That's why we offer fast and reliable stringing services that will have you back in the game in no time. Visit String It Up today at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web, www.stringitup.com. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network. The home for New York high school sports. We welcome you back to Manhasset, the Battle of the Sound, and it is presented by String It Up out of Huntington. Stringitup.com, established in 2009. Dylan Butler and Mike Hungerford, the entire varsity media crew with you, and off of that penalty at the end of the first half, it is Manhasset with their first man up opportunity with the 6 nothing lead. Sure foul right at the very end of the half, so there's no face-off, and that's just starts with it. There's a one-minute man up, so it's about halfway through now. As you change your sets here, Manhattan, a few times. Trying to get organized here. Here's Connor, he's got two goals on the game. Cardulo, he really got the party started for Manhasset, three and one. Had a hand in all four of those goals. Skip pass up top. Peterson, what a fake. Look at that, Un up and under. Save by Hagen, and then it'll be a push. It is Hagen's seventh save. Peterson, what a great hesitation move right there. All even. Yeah, the switch to his left really sold it on a couple of his defenders. And then another split dodge on top of it. Good penalty kill by Darian right there. He didn't need to go down the, uh, complete the touchdown and go down 7 nothing right now. You need, you need to use stops. And there's, you know, there's no, as Coach Grandmeyer probably told him, there's no six point goal, right? One play at a time, one possession at a time, one goal at a time. And uh, see if they can climb their way back in. Darian, a terrific start to this season. 
a win over Fairfield Prep on the road at Fairfield University. A bouncer by Haggerty, wide of the mark. That was last Saturday, so they started a little bit later than here in New York. A win at Fairfield Prep. That was a rematch of last year's Connecticut Class L state semifinal. And then at home against Brunswick, a, a team that it's now kind of a budding rivalry, right? It's the fourth year they've not beaten the Bruins. But this was their first win in dramatic fashion as well. Brady Picorni with the winner with 1.7 seconds left as Darianne beat the number one ranked team in the country. How about that, Haggerty? His first of the game, fourth of the year. And it is Manhasset extending their lead to seven nothing. Great, great possession by Manhasset all the way around. They had the ball, they had the ball pretty much. That's in 9.43, they've had it two minutes and 17 seconds right there. And they just, you know, found the right matchup, found Haggerty against a short stick. Well, kind of throws it right back to him. He squares up, goes downhill. The defender plays it pretty square. He's a lefty. Maybe he should be trying to take the ball of the field away. He's able to get his hands free and rip that corner right there. So a really good offense by Manhasset. Organized, patient, you know, great spacing. Haggerty wearing that number four in honor of the Farrell brothers. And a face-off win for Gerard. Eight of nine on the game. Here comes Gerard. Gerard, such a can't stop talking about what a special player he is. Just, you know, gets that exit, handles the pole, runs with speed, puts the ball where it wants needs to go. And you mentioned before, right, he'll go to Duke and Naso is a junior, so that'll be an interesting one next year. Naso's gotten a lot better in the collegiate level. And is one of the five, you know, top five or six guys yeah. in the country, you know, in my opinion. You know, I should mention women before, Lasala. Lasala, yeah. And, you know, a few of the guys were, were leaving out. No, no apologies meant to them when we left anybody out. But a bunch of guys at the top. But they all have the ability to handle the ball really well. Um, we saw women won a couple big ones last night. And the winner of Maryland's win over Ohio State. There's Cardulo working on that short stick. Back to Connor, to Haggerty, off the screen, skips it. Getting top side, a bouncer, and Hagen got a piece as a flag flies. The shot was by Danny Colin, but then Hassett will have another man up opportunity. Kind of love Manhasset's patience, just taking opportunity where it finds it, right? Find green grass. Uh, you know, guys are a little, a little bit more two-handed than some people would think in their ability to get to other parts of the field. And uh, draw a penalty right there to get the man up again. It's a one-minute slash, and that is against number 12, Mac McGarren. So the second man up opportunity for Manhasset. in total control of this latest edition of the Battle of the Sound. Working out of a little bit of a one three, two to a circle, rolling that guy off, and just taking a look, and you know, great patience. There's Cardulo, Connor, great save by Hagen. His eighth. Looks like he's feeling that a little bit too. They took that one in the leg and looked like on the way down. Great ride by Manhasset. And now here they come. Unsettled, another low shot. And Hagen, another save. I think Hagen's been pretty up to the task low. It's, it's high where they've gotten a few times. A few inside stuff too. It's going to be hard for any goal to save. But they've gotten more high than they have, uh, they have low. He's been really up to the task low. Hagen's ninth save as Darianne gets the clear as they're even now. I feel like Pocorni hasn't touched the ball. They haven't played much offense. He has it right now, but they haven't played much offense. And here he is now. Round in the cage. Little question mark. Jump shot wide of the mark. 
would have liked to see him settle down there a little bit. That five by five, that high five by five, seven by seven, and kind of like maybe rock her a little bit and get back to that a little bit from a, from a different a different angle. His brother Finn, a Harvard commit. Griffin also at Harvard, but Brady went a different direction. He'll go out to South Bend and play at Notre Dame. And he would certainly looks frustrated right now. I think that hit. Morrison, who was covering him, I think, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I think it was Mulholland, hit Mulholland with the shot. Coming out now in the clear, but I think I hit him with the shot. Here comes Lapina. And it's taken away by Darianne. It's Porter Barnett. Teresa goes low to high. Off the mark. Lapina looks a male mad at himself. I think he like, <laughs> that one back. He fell, he tripped on his own. I think I think when he kind of ran himself into a double right there. That won't happen too often, I'll tell you that. Here's McGuckin. McGuckin. Good hedge. Yeah. Like these, by Victor Deesa right there. Good hedge and snap back. A bull dodge by Lancaster. And we go the other way. Look at this clear. Peterson. Oh, what a look in front. And Connor gets his third. Jack Peterson from Northern Boulevard. <laughs> Full speed downhill. Doesn't look like he's even working hard. Great cut by great cut by Connor, just filling the lane right there, cutting the middle of the field against the defense. You can see all of Darian's heads are turned toward, towards Peterson. Like I think everyone sitting in the stands was looking at him. The only one looking at the at, uh, at Connor was him. Connor's third which increases his season total to seven, and Peterson with a pair of assists, both to Connor. He's got four on the season, and it's an eight-nothing lead for Manhasset. Gerard, face-off win, goes back the other way and gets it to him. It is all Manhasset. A little bit sloppy play now in the middle of the field. Why not? Peterson <laughs> cleans it up. He, he just hits. <laughs> you see the number 32 that he's wearing in honor of the late great John Driscoll, 1976 Manhasset graduate, an All American, a two time MVP of the Nassau Championship game. He did that in 75 and 76. Then he went to Virginia where he was a three time. All-American as well. Played with the New York Saints, won an MILL championship as well in 88. That is, that's the number right there to wear if you are Manhasset and it is Jack Peterson's this year to wear. Aaron Pass, last year you mentioned before, Hunter Panzik who's at Air Force. Steven Schneider, another one of those who has worn that number. As Hagen. Good pass, and now Darian can they catch Manhasset in the sub game? Yeah, PJ Flood in the game there was able to get in and cover that up. Looked like they had him at first, but Darian just needs to, you know, you start pressing, right? You're down eight nothing, and nothing's going your way. The clock is ticking. The faceoff guy doesn't lose, you know, and uh, you start pressing, and then things that were normally very easy in practice in, in, in the other games all of a sudden now seems so hard, you know. Look at that, McGuckin can't even turn flood all over him. And we speak so much about Lapina, we almost forget about P.J. Flood. And he's a baller as well, going to Hamilton. He's relatively new to that position, but he's made incredible strides in the weight room and his athleticism and even Keith Cromwell says that he and Lapina are kind of one and one A in that short stick D mini position. They kind of pressed down the ride there a little bit, Darian. And uh, they tried to make it a little tough, but uh, good job handling the ball and getting beaten. You know, you gotta beat a man sometimes. You're a pole, you gotta run by one. He was able to do that. Jack Morrison. One of the only mistakes man has uh, made. Yeah, the game. I was about they to two, almost like two, not say two in a row, but they had the last pitch and they threw one away and they had too many men. Yeah. So 
That doesn't happen very often. There haven't been many win windows of opportunity for Darian. This you would think is one of them. Here's Lancaster. And is Rupenstein, the athletic football player. Brother Colin was a captain. He's now at Colgate. If you're the Manasseh defense right now, you're playing with house money, right? You got eight goals to work with. Barnett, wide mm -hmm. of the mark. You know, you need the hats defensively, and you got eight goals to work with, so you, you, you're kind of owning your matchup a little bit more. You're a little bit playing with more pop in your step, and you're playing, not playing that much defense. So. Dorizo turns, and he is eaten up there as well by Jack Mulholland, the Dartmouth commit. It's a good matchup right there favoring Manhattan. I think Dorizo tried to turn the corner there, but try to get, get Corny involved again a little bit if they can. Collins, a flag flies, so this will be, and there's another one. That'll be a trip, so this would appear an opportunity for Darian to go six on four. The second foul, see what's going on here is Dylan, in, in, in Federation in lacrosse, the second foul kills the play if there's not a, a goal scoring opportunity immediately presenting itself. So right there, when the second flag was thrown, there was nobody shooting or in the act of scoring, so the whistle was blown. The first foul is a one-minute slash, and that's exactly what the conversation is right now with... Well, the debated Rainbier. issue is, from the coaching perspective, is what constitutes a goal-scoring opportunity. The, really, the, the intent of that rule is when you're at the end of the game and you're up by a few goals and you're trying to stall, and you get a couple guys you know, chasing you around, slashing your offensive players, and the flags are thrown, it kind of kills the play as a safety rule. It's a little different in that situation, I think. You know, the, there's the intent of the rule, and then there's the application of the rule that changes a little bit. So they're saying both of the infractions. Are against Rowan Collins. So he'll be in for two minutes. So it's six on five for two minutes. And the same thing we saw in Darian's first man up, it's Lapina locking off Pokorny. Low shot, ooh, went off the defender. Went off of Morrison's leg. Morrison almost got that ball. Good skewer sticking his hand, just putting a stick between his offensive player's hands right there. And there is the first goal. Morgan Rupenstein goes top shelf. Man up goal, and it's now an 8-1 ball game. It's exactly what uh what Darian needed, right? You need to break the ice somewhere. You know, you need somebody to get one. Buff the ball movement. I just drag it a little bit. But has to just a step weight smoking out there on the man down. So Porter Barnett picks up the assist, his third of the year. And Morgan Rupenstein gets his fifth goal. And Gerard right away wins it. Gerard over the net. He is 10 for 11. I don't live very close to here, but I would find my way to drive here every day to watch Cal Gerard play if I could. <laughs> There'll be more opportunities in the Varsity Media Sports Network, that is for sure. He, he, Gerard's one of, those, one of those players who people say sometimes, you know, guy, you know, kids become face-off guys to find a way onto the field or to play or whatever. Cal Gerard's a great athlete who happens to be able to face off. And it, it's a very different dynamic. And it's funny, too, because in our conversation with Jeff Braymeyer, you know, these are two obviously lacrosse-rich communities, right? But the face-off position really isn't trained or, or valued at Darien. And, and it hasn't really for a few years. And it's something that ended up really hurting them in the state championship a year ago when Henry Dodge just killed it there and led Staples to that upset win over the Blue Wave. Sure, it's, a, it's, it's a game changer, especially in, in federa with Federation rules without a shot clock. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, it changes the game a little bit. You see in college now with the advent of the use of the shot clock, 
but it's, it's minimized a little bit. You know, it's been that's the thing that was so great about Darien's win against Brunswick the other night. They got beat up so bad in the face, but it was irrelevant. They just kept playing and was able to score goals, and, and uh, not so much today. Yeah, no. Stall warning on. Doesn't matter. How about that? Turning, spinning, and scoring. Mike Mondiello. He gets his second of the game, and it's a 9-1 lead for Manhasset. I think Mondiello wore them all to sleep a little bit. I think they were gonna, thought they were going to go down. It's 31, uh, 30, it's about 35 or 36 seconds right here. And I think they were going to just maybe get to the very end of the quarter. And he, he's overplayed, so he just steps under. Blue right past his defender, Briggs McGuckin. Pretty athletic move diving there, but diving around the crease and around it, so it's not really a, a dive per se. Lands outside the crease. Another win for the returning All-American. And Gerard. He's like, Coach, what'd you call timeout for? I'm good. I had it. I had it. I had it. I had it. It would have been all right. I think, though, with a, with a player like of his ability, if you can minimize his wear and tear, maybe it's a good thing. And also, with 22 seconds up, maybe you want to try to get one more if you keep Cromwell right Absolutely. Why not? Got a set play here. You mentioned the Manhasset Indians. This is one of their showcase games, and they've got a few more as well coming up. You've got Mercer Island coming from the state of Washington. They've got what, three games here, right? Syosset as well as Lakeland Tennis on their schedule. And there's Cold Spring Harbor. That's a game that we'll have for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network and Ridgefield from Connecticut. You look at Cold Spring Harbor, Ridgefield, of course, you've got the 139th edition of the Woodstick coming up on April 29th. May 13th is Riggs Rock against Shamana. The interesting thing here too, Mike, is in last year's run to a state championship, they lost all those games. Sure. <laughs> like all of those like showcase games on your schedule, uh, Chaminade, Cold Spring Harbor, Garden City, lost all of those games, but uh, Manhasset found a way late in the season and they uh, went on and obviously won the state championship, their fifth state title, winning the C, their first since 2010 as well, and a year ago they went 17 and four. Their losses, as we said, Darien by two, Garden City by one, Cold Spring Harbor by one, and then Chaminade really uh, put up a big number here in that Riggs Rock game, but they beat Mount Sinai to avenge that loss in the LAC. They beat Burnt Hills 15 to six, and they then they defeated West Hill 13 to five to win the Class C championship. Well, Dylan, almost every team on Long Island has a loss at this point, right? Manhattan doesn't have one. They might not be getting one today. St. Anthony's, I don't think, has one. I don't think they got one. They played Del Barton today, I believe. But my, my point I'm trying to get to is you can't be afraid to play these games. You can't be afraid of losing. You're learning about yourself. And if you can keep coaching and keep playing and put your egos aside and just keep working through the fact that it's just so hard to go undefeated, and that's okay. At the end, you don't get a special trophy for not losing one. You get the same trophy if you win the last one. Peterson eaten up, low shot by Haggerty. Another save. The tenth of the game by Carter Hagen, but it has been all man has it. The Indians, as Mikey Mondiello beats his matchup and gets to the cage, and man has it in cruise control here in this battle of the sound. A 9-1 lead heading in to the fourth quarter. You're watching it all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Are you tired of constantly having to adjust your lacrosse stick during the game? Let the experts at String It Up in Huntington take care of it for you. At String It Up, we use the highest quality materials and techniques to ensure your stick is game ready every time. Visit them today at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web www.stringitup.com. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. 
Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back here to Ed Walsh Field. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford, the entire Varsity Media crew for the latest edition of the Battle of the Sound. And it has been one-way traffic here for Manhasset. A 9-1 lead over Darian. A matchup of two of the top 11 ranked teams in the country. Ooh, Jake Wilson gets a win. The second for Darianne against Cal Girard. Girard's lost twice the same way. I think he was trying to pull that ball out and it didn't, he didn't have it pinched in there good enough and it went out the other way against the, the uh, he beat him so quickly <laughs> that the ball comes out. And a bouncer and a save by M. Porter Barnett with the shot. It's M's fifth save of the game. He has not had a lot to do and look at that low shot. How about the kick save? by Hagen. We go the other way. Some numbers for Darianne. And the blue wave pull it back out. Well, that's one of Hagen's best saves of the day. He's had a few, probably got you know, 10, 11, 12 right in that range. Yeah, unofficially we have him at 11. Okay. One guy who has been off the score sheet is this man right here, Brady Picorni. Pumps the brakes. Little fake for Corny. Behind the back shot. He has certainly used his repertoire, man. He has gone question mark. He's gone BTB. He's tried a variety of moves to shake those Manhasset poles, but uh, nothing yet in the scorebook. He had a great step under move the other night against Brunswick. It was a really, really nice move, and uh, hasn't been able to pull that off tonight, the Manhasset. Barnett goes to Lancaster, his shot wide and no backup. So it'll be Manhasset ball. Nice to see too at halftime, Jeff Bremeyer was honored for his 600th career win. As we mentioned before, he's at 652 now in his career. Incredible numbers when you think about it. Next on the, well after uh, his next three wins, which would put him fifth. A guy that you know well, uh, Bob Hartraff is number four on that all-time list with 7.08. Just crazy to think about, mind-boggling wins. Doing something so well for a really long period of time. And he is the Darian coach from the very beginning. How about this shot and a goal. Mondiello again, he's got three now, the third. Indian to score three goals in this one. Yeah, Mondiello just, you know, he's got the, got the quicks, right? Pow, you know, speed, gets underneath. Mikey! And you got to think too, Mike, this is the matchup he'll have pretty much all year, right? He'll draw that short. Unless, of course, he gets super hot, right? And you got to pull him, but uh, these are the matchups that he can exploit. Great top hand fake. By then, kind of froze with defender number 12. Uh, McGarren kind of froze him up a little bit and able to get, keep getting to the middle. That was crafty play right there by Mondiello. So Wilson and Gerard again at the faceoff X. And great job by Wilson just mucking it up a little bit, right? It's still alive. And Gerard gets it anyway. <laughs> Gotta get a win all different ways. That's how you get one. Exactly. Right they're all not going to be clean. Gerard, Fogo goal! If there's a guy, man, who deserved that, it is Cal Gerard. What a goal for Gerard. It is his fourth of the year. He's got four already. He's pretty wild. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, if Cal Gerard's at a place, he's not at Manhattan High School, he's playing for you know a, a team with a, a little bit less talent. He, or maybe a lot less talent. And he just happened to be that guy, kind of like Peter Masawa was in high school. And, and he could play all the time and he would have a, a, a lot of points. Very talented. Little flex <laughs> for the Selly. Why not? And now Wilson 
and Gerard back at it again. This time he goes backwards. Perfect to flood. You would hope if you were Darian there, you, 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 hip, you, you hip to hip there on the, on the, on the wing line there. You, on the, on when he flips that one back, hopefully you can battle for that one a little bit better. That one right to flood, good job. Flood, you know, he's had that happen to him before, <laughs> that ball delivered like that by Cal. And, and you just get in the habit of, when you put it with the great face off guys, you just know where he's going with the ball and how he's doing it. And, you know, it's just, it's like playing any other position. A year ago in that Woodstick Classic, he had that incredible matchup with Jack Cascadin. I think he actually won the individual matchup, but obviously Cascadin and the Trojans won on that Stevie Fennell overtime goal here under the lights. But Cascadin now up at Cornell with Mark Silos as well, both facing off for the Big Red. And the guy I know well from Massapequa, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Long Island, uh, Cornell was Long Island face off north. Yeah. Haggerty. Nice hesitation. Ooh, getting hammered, and there's another flag, another man up opportunity. As Darianne looks like they're getting a little bit frustrated here and need cooler heads to prevail. Both that dodge, they threw that ball forward, and Colin went, went to, he went to the spot where he knew he was going to get hit trying to finish it, and uh, got him up high a little bit here. Yeah, the penalties today, Mike, they've not been for the faint of heart. We've had none of those 30-second <laughs> technical fouls. They have all been of the one and two. Well, that one was a double preferred by Collins, but all of the one-minute variety. See Joe Resin Pollock in there with the Darien players and the Manhasset players. Uh, Joe, a great player himself at, uh, at Farmington High School and Johns Hopkins University. And uh, he's telling all guys, like, hey, it's, it's a long season ahead of us, right? This is game four, game three, four, five, something like that. It was on number seven, Luke Caesar, I believe. It was seven who had the hit. But 10. Grafton Eli will go in. This will be of the two minute unreleasable variety. So Manhasset, already up by 10, can really lay the hammer here on this man up. Seven fifty-eight to go. I mean, you could just eat a minute right now. You know, if you coach Cromwell, have the guys eat a little bit of time, and uh, you know, take it down under under uh, under seven minutes before you want to do anything offensively. You mentioned a guy certainly who knows about this end of the field. It is Keith Cromwell, man, uh, a Nassau champion in his time at Hicksville. Went on to become the all-time points and goals leader at Rutgers. See, uh, you see the uh, Darien guys are chasing it a little bit. You know, good, good job on their part trying to get out on the ball and try to, you know, create a turnover. Peterson. 23 was Colin. They go the other way now to Haggerty. Colin, discipline, right? He could have possibly shot that ball, but, but he, you know, in some, it's in some teams, maybe you do shoot it. You're going to see these guys, you do, what your coach, you do exactly what you're coached to do. And uh, great discipline there by him. It was up on the uh, bouncer there by Cardulo wide of the mark. But Colin was up on varsity a year ago. Kind of that Cromwell describes as a pit bull type of player. He loves his energy and his speed. How about the fact that they could put Cardulo inside on man up? A lot of teams he'd be a perimeter stretch shooter. He's playing inside. A nice uh, you know, luxury to have if you're Manhasset because he's circling there in that five-man rotation. They'll, they'll get him open in that five-man. Here's Peterson. Connor, what a great look. That's a shot. Looks like Hagen got a piece. They got him open in there for sure. He just couldn't finish it, but Hagen with a good save there. That's like another one of his, another good save for Hagen. Again, unofficially, we have him at 12. <laughs> Collins from behind. 
still a man up here for the next 23 seconds. But getting it back is Barnett and a flag against Manhasset. Behind the back shot by Picorni wide. A one minute slash. Good trail check by Diso there. I believe that was. I'm sorry, Low Collins. So Jack Morrison? Diso was last year. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. right? right? So you've got 13, sorry, you have 13 seconds left, you go five on five, and then you'll have a 47 second man up opportunity for Darianne. I missed that replay, but I guess they call that over, that, that, that foul on the, on, the, that over on the open head check? I'm sure what they found that. They called it a slash on Morrison. So now they're even. Darian's fourth man up opportunity there, one for three. Bouncer wide of the mark by Rupenstein. He's got that lone Darian goal to this point. The you know, reason why you play these kind of games, still and right? I mean, in every game you know you get you get attached to your record, but you learn about yourself. And right now they have Picorni, good seal. They're lock, locking for Corny again, you know, with that, with, with, um, with, with Pina, and what do you have coming off it? They're trying to seal for him. Bilodeau. Oh, somehow found the way. How about the freshman, Ben Bilodeau? Really nice goal by Bilodeau. In traffic there. His second of the year. Let's watch it again. Barnett with the feed. Well, that was his earlier shot wide of the mark. But yeah, listen, he was in the teeth of the defense. That's a hard one to get through. Trying to use him as trying to use Picorni as a screen there, right? Screening off the ball. Here it is. Look at that. Und underhands that one in. Hockey like. Yeah, another man up goal. So I mean if you're looking for positives for Darianne, they're Man up unit now with both of their goals. More struggles at the face off X. And again, I think Braemeyer understands that's going to be the situation really throughout the year. It's tough there though. You had a couple of chances to get a grounder right there and you weren't able to do it if you were if you were Darren, you know, it's 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 uh you had a chance for a couple of attack guys, had a chance to go for the grounder, and, and I think that was Morrison got him too. One of the Jacks got, got to the ball <laughs> first, make it easier for myself. It is fair. It is, yeah, you, you just say one of the Jacks, and you've got a pretty good chance there. As Connor gets it back to Cardulo. Sports, uh, sports create all kinds of situations, you know, Dylan, and uh, I don't think too many kids playing for Darien have been in a game where they were down 11-2 to two in the fourth quarter, and... Uh, you know, it, uh, it humbles all. Yeah, that state championship game, I think that was a 12-3 final, and that was a shocker because of that score, that Staples was able to beat Darian. And, of course, you feel like every time Darian steps on the field in a season, they are the favorite to win a state championship. Uh, you know, look, the numbers bear that out. When you look at their 14 state championships and 25 consecutive trips to the state final four from 88 to 2012. Cardulo passed back up top. And in fact, being as honest as he is, Braemeyer said he was surprised that they were ranked by the publications in Connecticut number one in the state. He thought for sure that was Fairfield Prep because of all the talent that they return as Wilson picks up that ground ball. But he figured that must have been just out of, you know, respect as a timeout is called by Darian and uh, like they earned it certainly by one beating Fairfield Prep and then obviously beating Brunswick. Brunswick's not one of those schools that the publications up in Connecticut rank, they have them separate sort of than the FCAC schools. But FCAC championships as well a lot of them for Darianne 19 to be exact let's take a look at the blue waves upcoming 
schedule as well, and it doesn't get any easier, right? You've got Fairfield, Ludlow, and then Chaminade. That's what, that's a fun one as well. Then that Staples, a rematch of last year's Class L championship game, and then they go to Richfield. But Braemeyer said, you know, rivalries and matchups, and every year they play St. Anthony's, and every year they play Dale Barton, and every year they play Manhasset. But Chaminade, first time last year that Jack Moran and, and Braemeyer were able to get together. They played that one at Gold Star Stadium, and those two guys, man, you talk about the list of all-time winningest head coaches. What is their combined number now? What is, let's see. You got Moran. Chaminade played today. We're not sure of that result. So this was coming into today. 597 career wins. And you see Braemeyer in front of him with 652. That's a lot of victories. I'm not sure anyone's uh, catching the likes of Masser and Cuzo and Tim Flynn, man, out of Mountain Lakes. He's still doing it with 716 wins. A lot of those guys around him, they've all since retired. But Flynn from Mountain Lakes still doing it there in the state of New Jersey. So you said this is Coach Bramar's 40th year? 40th season. So they're 2-0, they're right? So you take those two wins away, give them the straight 650. And if uh, you divide 650 by 40, I think you get about 16 wins a year. If my quick <laughs> math is right, I'm not a math. I'm not. I'm never really good at math. And again, he and look at the schedule that they play as well, right? Like 16 here. wins a year for a high school team is is when you play about 16 games a regular season or a little bit less, is is a uh, is a tremendous accomplishment. It's barely losing. It's losing like one or two games a year, maybe at at, at most, you know. And uh, it's it's a, it's a massive accomplishment. And, People mistake, people think winning is easy. Winning is hard. And, uh, and to win consistently is hard because if, if you beat Darian, it, it's one of your best wins of the season, right? Absolutely. Now Hagen out of his net as that extra defender hustles back there. What a terrific pass. And Hagen, another save. Hagen's hustling for that grounder. There goes the big man, Hagen, the one handed pass. Got hammered, so there'll be a penalty. And Hagen, he's actually down, and this could be a concern unless he's just gassed a little bit there. But you mentioned Darianne a year ago, 20 and three. So that's 23 games. Wilton, they beat in the FCAC championship game. Good applause here by the fans of both teams. And watch, here he goes again. What do you think, Mike? Let the big man go. Yep, great job just staying tall right there, reading the shooter, going after the rebound, and then making a clearing pass and getting fouled. So uh, a pretty good uh, a pretty good series there for uh, Hagen's, Hagen's uh, highlight tape. A year ago, that team was led by the likes of Matt Minicus and Christian Allegro and Joe Caesar. They also helped the lead Darianne to the most recent win over Manhasset. That was 13-11 a year ago. You go back to 2019, and it was Manhasset with a 10-5 win. Aiden Mulholland at Michigan with 3-1, and, and Terenzi with 2-1. and one. M, another save for him as well to deny McGuckin. That's a good shot right there. A good low and away shot for M's a, you know, M's a lefty. That was a good low and away. That was probably his best save of the day, I think. Here's Lopina, and he will be chased. And a timeout called by Manhasset. You know, Darian, so many great players over the year played at Darian, uh, Darian High School. Um, Kevin Lindley, I believe, was one yeah. of Darian's greats. Uh, tremendous scoring. Uh, Case Mathias. Another tremendous player to play for Darian, who's, you know, guys who were great college players. Kevin Lindley at Loyola. So you mentioned Lindley, and interestingly enough, the number 12 that's uh, currently worn by one of their captains in uh, Mac McGarren. That is the special number for Darianne, and it's in honor of Wes Burton, who played for the Blue Wave in the early 90s. He was diagnosed with cancer in 92. They had his number retired initially, and Barton became a team leader and later a coach as well. And nine years ago, Braemeyer reinstated the number and wanted to give it to a player that he describes as a senior of honor. And this year, uh, we mentioned again, McGarren. How about uh, David Ivanchuk uh, getting it a year ago? He's at Villanova. 
Minicus, Michael Minicus, that is, and Kevin Lindley also previously wearing the number 12, among others, for Darianne. Sure, tremendous lineage of players there, and uh, all, all special numbers are pretty cool. It means a lot in every community where they have them, and, uh, and uh, you know, I know those guys, when they get those numbers, they wear them with pride, and, and what it means to them to be part of a, a great tradition. A number at Manhasset, and, and at Darien, and, and uh, you know, even at Manhasset, some of the, 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 the loss they have with those players that, they, you know, who passed away, yep. um, they made something really great out of it, and that's awesome. Yeah, keep four them, and keep 44 them, keep memory alive. as well, and, and you love that idea, too, I mean, look, it's one thing to retire a number. No one else can wear that. But I think you get more value, uh, especially in keeping that player's legacy alive by giving it out to someone. We, we, we talk all about, too, with, uh, with Riggs Rock, right, and, and Jimmy Regan's number 19 for Chaminade, and that's another one of those special numbers as well. And that way, year after year, those players, and you have it as well with the Krumenacher, uh, number 40 as well at Farmingdale. Sure, absolutely. So they have a double team on. They're still man down Manhattan, so they're going to try to escape this double team if they can. Tough situation. You don't have to keep it in there. Look at Mondiello. Just gets on his horse, spins, turns. He gets whacked. You don't have to keep the ball in the box like you would have done the three goals. There you go. And a flag is thrown. And what a job by Mondiello, man. Getting all that work on man down and he earns himself a flag or he, a flag against Ariane, I should say. Got some second uh, secondary players in, on offense here. Mondiello still playing, but some other guys in. It'll be a 30 second push. <laughs> there were seven seconds left on the man up. So once Connor's penalty is up, and Darian uh, Manhasset will be a man up. They've not scored on the man up yet. They're approaching the final minute of this one. And again, Hagen out of his cage to act as that extra defender. Inside the final minute, what a win this is for Manhasset. No doubt. I mean, you, you know, you, you, you're playing at home against a team that just beat the number one team in the country, and and uh, you know they, they played with, with tremendous passion and uh, came out of the gate hot and ran some really good sets right from the beginning. And some of their, their, their senior leadership guys owned up right from the beginning. Kajulo, Peterson. You can see they were dialed in and they got a lot done right from the beginning. Yeah, Connor with three, Cardula with three and one, Mondiello with three. Another dominant performance from Cal Girard at the faceoff X. 14 of 16 for him and Matt M too. When called upon, made the saves that he needed to make with six on the game. The battle of the sound this year goes to the Indians of Manhasset. They avenge last year's loss. And the Indians with a decisive, a rare decisive battle of the sound victory here, 11 to two. Very few of these games have, uh, have been like this, but hats off to Manhasset for playing really well. Showing up and, uh, and getting after it, and, you know maybe maybe Darian was uh, you know, still on that high from what happened a few days ago, and they struggled a little bit getting started. And, but but Manhasset was the one that said you know, we're going to we're going to come after you, and, uh, and they did it I think, right from the start. Played really well, almost mistake free for I would say nearly three quarters. Yeah, for Darian, I mean again a killer beginning of the season schedule. We go Fairfield Prep, Brunswick. And Brunswick, by the way, was Thursday night. When you turn around, you get on the bus, you come to Manhasset in this Battle of the Sound matchup. But we know that they're going to be just fine as this season goes along. Bramire's guys, uh, they are now 2-1 and one on this young season. And Manhasset improves to 4-0. and oh. Manhasset's going to be very, they play like this, very difficult to beat. I don't know too many teams that can, that can uh, you know, on both sides of the, on both sides of the field, on their offensive and defensive end. It really, playing like this, no real, no real obvious weakness at any position, and you have, 
you know, my opinion, the best player, on the most impactful player, if not one of the best players on Long Island, you know, Cal Gerard facing off. And, and impactful is important, right? When you, you know, you, you give you possession, possession. But when you have the efficiency that Manhattan had today offensively, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you make it very difficult. And last year's game, Darian winning 13-11, Cal Gerard had two goals. I think he is fine with just getting the one and one and winning all those face-offs that he did to lead his team to this 11-2 win. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. The Dalers against Southside, that game in Rockville Center. I will be on the call with Tom Rooney on that one. And then it's North Shore and Herricks. Port Washington going to Cold Spring Harbor. Cold Spring Harbor looking to bounce back off that loss to Garden City. Sias at Massapequa, no love lost between those two, that is for sure. And Cold Spring Harbor and Manhasset. Manhasset looking to uh, get the response to last year's loss. And then there's Huntington and Hills as well as we go out to the 6-3-1 on the 20th of April. So again, your final score, it is Manhasset 11-2 over Darianne in this battle of the sound. We want to thank our entire varsity media crew. Our executive producer is Ben Turchin. Our technical director, Chris Sweeney. Tony DeMasso and Rob Bianco bringing you the moving images. My broadcast partner, Mike Hungerford. Dylan Butler thanking you for joining us from Manhasset. We'll see you next time on the Varsity Media Sports Network.